The following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. Welcome to the ring and all of the sports. My name is Leo Connors and I'm your host. And tonight I got a special guest, Josh Briggs, professional wrestler. Thanks Josh, for having me, Leo. Not a problem, man. Glad my, to be here. Glad to be my here. pleasure. Um, well, like I was telling you off air, pretty much just getting to know you. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then yeah. we'll later on we'll play the name game. Um, where did you grow up, Josh? Um, grew up in Bullhead City, Arizona. That's where wow. I was born. Um, it's a long ways away from here. Yeah. But, but um, it's a good transition for me. Right. Nice. Now, how long, like, did you, st you grew up there your whole life? Yeah. Um, born in Bullhead City. It's about an hour outside of Las Vegas, Nevada. Okay. And we just, just lived there forever. Right. I, I moved out here, um, man, five, six years ago. So, um, lived there my whole life. Moved wow. down to Phoenix for a little bit. Yeah. And, um. Like the snow? No, <laughs> not at all. Ain't no snow down there. Not at all. Um, yeah, I'd only seen it once or twice in right? my entire life. Yeah. So uh, coming Before out. Before you moved up. Yes. So coming out here was was rough. My first day in college, it was um, the spring semester. Right. And um, there was so much snow from the winter. And uh, my first day going to class, I didn't have a car. I had to walk. Uh -huh. I think it was like forty five minutes from my dormitory to this to the classroom. Right. And it was just miserable. I think it was negative four degrees oh, out. I wouldn't doubt Wasn't it. used to it at all. Right. It was rough. Wow. Did you want uh, to play sports as a kid? Um, yeah, I did play sports. Um, you name it, I played it. Really? Okay. Um, I think started off playing soccer. Yeah. I was pretty good at that, um, just for the fact that I was really big and everyone kind of got out of my way. <laughs> um, then I moved to baseball. I was absolutely dreadful at baseball. Really? Um, one of the sports I could never understand. Um, I just, I had no patience. Right. And um, I moved to karate. I uh, did that for a while. Got my black belt and kind of fell out of it. Right. Me and my family, we all did it. And then we just stopped going. I don't know why. Oh, wow. um, none of that has transferred over into my everyday life. So right. <laughs> if someone comes and mugs me, I'm probably screwed. Um, I don't think they're going to come mug you, though. Unless, yeah, huh? Let's you hope know. not. Like, let's yeah. hope not. Um, then I moved to basketball. I was really infatuated with basketball, and um, I, I was all right at that. Just, right. just again for the fact that I was really big. Yep. Um, my dad suggested I try football out. So I think around seventh grade, I started football, and then that was pretty much my main thing. Right. Did a little bit of wrestling, uh, some boxing, but nothing. None of that was really serious. It was right. always basketball and football. And one day I realized that as a kid, I always wanted to be a basketball player or a professional wrestler, never right. football. So I realized that me being like probably at the time six, three or six, four. Right. Um, that's a, a point guard's yeah. size yeah. in the NBA. So right. I kind of sweep that under the rug and decided yep. we'll just do this for fun. Right. And um, got really acquainted with football and picked that up kind of well. Right. So you obviously played in high school. So let's yeah. move to the next step. What, what I want to ask you. So you played for UMass Amherst? UMass Amherst. Yeah, that was um, some fun and some rough times. Yeah. Um, it was good. Yeah. Um, I was a starter there. Had a lot of fun. Made a lot of good memories. Played in front of... 110,000 people a bunch of times. Right. Um, yeah, that was, that was fun. What position did you play? I played offensive line. Nice. Um, started at guard, right guard a lot. Um, and for some reason, I picked up the playbook really well. Yep. So if anyone went down, they'd just slide me over into that spot. Right, and some would yeah. the spot. The, okay. last, the last game of my season, I ended up playing, the uh, last game of my season, my senior year, so my last game ever, I played all five positions in one game. Wow. Yeah. Belichick would have loved you. Seriously, yeah, that's probably how, not. That's the type of play he likes. Yeah. You know, but I, I think just, a lot of coaches are going that way now, too, because he's so successful. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was just really smart. I was never the best. I had really good technique. Yeah. 
Um, I was really coachable. Um, never really got into trouble on or off the field. I just came there to do my job. Never had any penalties. Um, and I just knew the playbook inside and out. Everyone's position, no matter what. I started at tight end a few times, yep. um, fullback a few times. Wow. If you needed me somewhere, you could have put me anywhere, I think. They could count on you. That's yeah. awesome. Any of the, your teammates making it into the NFL? Um, yeah, Tajay Sharp. He's a starting wide receiver for the Tennessee Titans. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, a few of them got drafted. Um, a few of them were on the practice squads, right. everything like that. Um, but we, I think the downfall of our UMass team when I was there, um, because we were, we were a solid team. But we never won. I think that we were a great team without those star players. Right. So when we play Penn State, who had those star players, yeah. um, we were exposed a little right, bit. Right. Um, but, you know, that's how it is. We, we were a really good team. Right. So when we played teams that didn't have those stars, we'd excel. Right, right. That's cool, though. I mean, so you played all four years? All four, yeah. That's awesome. So now that's why you obviously moved up here. Well, yeah, yeah. School. Yeah, I mean, I redshirted, yeah. um, and then my my next year didn't play much. But after that, yeah, right. I played. That's awesome. Yeah, it's fun. Um, that's why I moved out here. They gave me a scholarship and everything. Right. Um, it's a good school too. It's a it great really school. Is a good it's school. a great school. Yeah. yeah you, um, Amher, or all of Massachusetts all of yeah. has just amazing schools. Yeah, but um, I think that was one of the one of the deciding factors. My family wanted me to get a good education. Right. And um, I did. I did write by them, I think. That's good. That's really good. Yeah. Yeah, you definitely did. You know, you, you, you're you going to college, you know what I mean? Now, we're going to get into the pro wrestling stuff. That's why I'm here. <laughs> when did you discover pro wrestling? Like, how old were you? Man, that's, um, I've had a lot of hits to the head, so I don't remember exactly when. Okay. Um, but I think it was my fifth or sixth birthday. I got, younger than me. I got wrestling toys. I, ha I have, like, pictures. Right. Um, so that's kind of where my memory can right. jog from. So I have those pictures. I think it was my fifth or sixth birthday. One of my friends must have gotten them for me. And I was infatuated with them. Yeah. Um, they were, I think they were WCW action figures. Okay. So that was what initially got me into wrestling was yeah. those figures for WCW. I wanted to see um the giant or the big yeah, yeah. show you big know show, i had the yeah. big that big old action figure and i had the little ray mysterio guy with him that he'd just throw around right and um goldberg and chris jericho with yeah. his little whip uh, just a bunch of a bunch of things it was all wcw and i think i gravitated towards wcw because of those action figures right. well a lot of people think that the, the best wrestling was in wcw back then i mean yeah wwf or e whatever you want to call it had some good wrestlers but the best wrestlers, I think, mm -hmm. in my opinion, were in WCW. I mean, you had Mysterio. You just said Jericho. Yeah. You had Eddie Guerrero, Dean Malink. I mean, they all, Chris Benoit. Some of they them, were all some there. Some of them the best of all time. Of all time, yeah, in one promotion. Yeah. You know? And then but to see all, like, four of them switch up, that, that was over. like, I'll never forget that night. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. You know what I, mean? I think um, I really was in love with Chris Jericho because yeah. he made me laugh. Oh, yeah. And um, I had no idea about the techno the technicalities in wrestling right. or anything like that. It was just, oh, this guy's really big and strong. I like him. This guy's yeah. really funny. I like him. Yeah. So once um, Jericho made that move to the WWE, yep. I followed. Right. And um, that was when I kind of just ixnayed all of WCW yep. and stuck with the WWF at the time and um, fell in love with everything they did. Jericho came over, it was so huge. Mm -hmm. I mean, to have him, he interrupts the rock yep. of all people. You know what I mean? It yeah. just like, it was nice to see him because he was doing so well over WCW. And then when he came, he was immediately put up yeah. to the top, and he, which he earned. Because, I mean, the very first time I ever saw him wrestle was in ECW. Right. And he was just unbelievable. Right. You know? So then I started getting tapes yeah. from his stuff in Japan and Smoky Mountain. And to, the, to this day, Jericho's still one of my favorites. Jericho's one of the best of all time. And he's still a riot yep. with his list and all he that. He is. Um, I admire him because he can transition, yep. and he's so easily just the most over guy oh, yeah. on the show. And he's past his prime, but he's still doing things better than anyone else. Yeah. And he, he just, yeah. he's, he's amazing. 
in how he changes himself. Just the little yes. things, you know, like that. Because I read all three of his books, too. Me, too. You know what I mean? And just, like, the uh, scarf yep. with no jacket. You know what I mean? And then, like you said, he just gets over. Yeah. The click. Just the click One of click. a pen, and he's like... Place goes yep. crazy. Yeah, Jericho's obviously yep. one of my favorites too. Yeah. So you just mentioned some of your favorites growing up was obviously right. Jericho and yep. the guys from WCW. Uh, you told me off there, and I was surprised because I thought you got trained somewhere else. Why don't you tell everybody uh, who trained you? Initially, Mike Hollow. Mike Hollow trained me, and um, at the time he was at the Bell Time Club. Yep. So I'd pick up classes after Mike Hollow through Bo Douglas. And I think I went about four, three, four months, my first three or four months, training six days a week. Three with Mike Hollow, uh, two to three with Bo Douglas. Um, and, you know, that was, that was just some of the most fun in my life because I, w I didn't understand yep. wrestling yep. and I was trying to learn. And it was, it was just so fun. You know, I, I can sit back and think of those days driving from Amherst, to Wakefield, and that's like a two and a half hour drive. Yeah. Just so excited behind the wheel of my car, right. snow, rain, whatever, had to be there. That's and cool. um, yeah, so so that was um, that was fun. Who uh, who else was in your training classes? Um, Dan Terry and yeah. Benny Jooks. It was mostly us three at the time, um, and I think that I got really good because of both of them. You know, Benny Jooks has been around for God knows how long. Yeah, he's awesome. He's Dan is too. Dan, oh, Dan, Dan is, is awesome Dan's too. phenomenal. Yeah. If you ask Dan Terry, he's going to tell you he's terrible, and right. I, and he's lying. He was sitting right here trying to tell us that. Yeah, so. he's lying. He I, is lying. I, love I watch Dan. him. I love Dan on and off. He's another one of my best friends. Yep. Um, but Benny and me, we'd have timeless matches. Like there would be no time on the match. We'd yep. just go until he was tired of calling stuff. It was on the fly. We'd just hey Josh, get in the ring. Um, okay, fine. And we'd go for 20 minutes, and Bo would just watch and take notes yep. and tell us what we did horribly and what we did great. And um, I really attribute me being so good so early on in my career to those matches, three, right. six days a week right. after class, yep. just on-the-fly matches. So now, being a year and four months in, I can call anything and remember anything. And if something goes awry... Yep. I'm extremely comfortable getting it back on track. Right. It's amazing, too, how short a time you've been wrestling. Yeah. I saw your Facebook the other day when you were putting out where you're booked. You're getting booked everywhere. Yeah. And That's you, pretty fast. It usually does not happen to someone that early yeah. in wrestling to be booked all over the place. Yeah. I mean, a lot of it's just because of my size and because of the people I'm connected to, right. Mike Hollow and yep. Brian Fury. Um, yeah, but once you wrestle for them once, it's not because of them yeah, after no, that. Yeah, no, I've never, I've never wrestled for one place one time, right. and it's been a one-off. They've seen me and they've liked what I've done, and I try to be the most professional guy that can come. I try and always help out. Yep. Um, and I try and promote the shows as much as possible, right. and I try and leave the crowd with something they can remember. Nice. No, oh, that's great, because I remember the first time I saw you, I was, like, amazed at the size of you and yeah. stuff, you know what I mean? And I didn't even know how long you'd been wrestling, but I was very impressed. I really was. Thank you And it's much. funny, because you look at, like, Dijak, yeah. who's phenomenal. But I remember the first time I saw him. I, yep. I didn't see him. Shame on me. I just didn't, you know what I mean? The next time I saw him was, like, six months later, and there was a big difference yeah. I saw, you know what I mean? I, I can't say enough about Dijak. Oh, yeah, he's um, awesome. From when, once I transitioned from the Bell Time Club and um, Mike Hollow, about six months into my training, to um, the NEPWA, yep. New England Pro Wrestling Academy, with Brian Fury, that was where things started picking up. That's when psychology, um, character, everything that makes you marketable and people invest in you and people put their time into you, and people want to come and watch you, that's when that stuff came. And um, Guy Jack and Brian Fury both helped me a lot. Um, you might have heard the story before, but Di my first day there, I think me and Guy Jack worked. We just threw, I got thrown into a 10, 12-minute match. And being in there with him, that was the first eye-opener to how I need to be. Right. He was so genuinely intense, and you could feel it. Yeah. And I think being in there with that... 
made me better than I'd ever been possible to be better without, without right. being in there with him. He is an intense, intense he's, guy in the ring. He's probably my favorite wrestler on the planet. Um, the, the first time I saw you wrestle, you had the surfer gimmick. Yes. Now, are you still doing that anywhere? Not at all. No? Okay. Not at all. That, um, that died um, a few, probably about half a year ago. Okay. That, that, was, um, that was just something that got thrown onto me. Yep. Uh, it was my contro at the time. And um, it was never really comfortable for me, but it was really fun. Right. Um, especially because it was my first gimmick I was yep. ever doing. Yep. And um, I got comfortable enough to be me, to be Josh Briggs. And um, now I'm doing another character at Blitzkrieg and wherever anyone else wants to book me. Um, I'm basically Bruiser Brody nice. in 2017. Yep. Yep. So um, that's a lot of fun. And that's, that's, I get so much to look, to look at, like yeah. I have archives of Bruiser oh. Brody to just watch, Icon. and it's so fun. Yeah. So Icon. fun. I'm a huge Brody fan. Me too. Stan Hansen too. Stan Hansen. When I was great. telling you off the year how me and Derek went down to Philly that time, yeah. I got to meet Stan Hansen. Yeah. And I was, wow. That's I'm, awesome. Oh yeah. To meet like one of your heroes growing up. Yep. Pretty amazing. Right. And he was so nice too. I bet. My grandson came with us, and he was sleeping, so I pointed to him, right? He was taking a nap. SoCal Val was babysitting. Okay. Well, she's like, don't worry, I got him. I'm sitting in here. So I should, said, just ah, stand. I said, hey, when he wakes up, can I come over? He's like, absolutely. He comes over, he takes my grandson, puts his arm around him. I'm like, just the guy was just amazing. He didn't even have to. Yeah. He could have just been nice, yep. but he was overly nice. It was Good. amazing. Um, okay, so your first match. Yes. Um, my first match was, I think, three months into my training. Okay. It was with Benny Jooks. Yep. And um, VCW? No, for um, UFO. Oh, okay. Pat for Pat. Dillon. For Pat, yeah. okay. Love Pat. Me too. Pat's a great guy. Um, Pat was always there, like, just hanging around the Bell Time Club right. and became a good friend of mine and was one of the first guys to give me opportunities, which nice. I'll never, I'll never repay Pat for that, but it's right. really cool. Um, so, yeah, it was me and Benny, and to this day, it was one of the best matches I've had. Um, it was very basic, but um, it was a solid match. Right. Um, Benny put the whole thing together. Benny's an ultimate professional. Right. Um, one of the best undiscovered guys. Um, and undiscovered, I mean, not hasn't worked for Ring of Honor right, right. or oh, yeah. TNA. But, like, you know, like everybody that. around here knows who he Everyone is. But like you said, him. he hasn't really branched out even yeah. in the independence yeah. anywhere else, you know? Yeah. He's got, his, he's got his good thing. I know he's coming back from an injury. I, I see him all the time still and yeah. still one of, my, one of my best friends. Yeah, I ran into him at, um, at uh, Pat's last show, the April vacation. Yep. Me and my grandson were there. I was selling my merch and stuff like that. Kid is a great worker, man. Amazing. Definitely. Amazing. Um, you brought up too, like when you said Pat House, like he's you know pretty much helped you out so much. Yeah. He actually did for me too because yeah. my first show I did, they told me we could have Skype, but they didn't have Skype up yet, and I already had a guest through Skype. All of a sudden, like an hour and fifteen minutes before I go on the air, I got no guest. I call Pat. I tell him my problem. He said, "When do you need me?" I told him the time. He goes, "I'm on my way." Sweet. I mean, the guy's just just a and I and I only knew him at that point for like four months, and that was it. I didn't even know him that long. Wow. You know? yeah, he's just a genuinely good he guy. He is. He's a great guy. And he's looking fantastic, yeah. too. Lost you know? a lot of weight. I'm really proud of him. Me, too. I, I, I think I, everybody is that I him. Yeah. I initially met him when he was bigger. Yeah. And um, he transitioned very well. He looks good. He yeah. takes care of himself now. Yes, he so does. I'm, and I'm, and I'm you know what I like about it, too, is he, he still eats. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm just trying because I know a couple other guys I know that had the surgery. They need, you know, they needed it, and they look fantastic. But they watch every single thing yeah. they eat. Pat will still have a cheeseburger if he wants. You yeah. know what I mean? And, but he just works out, walks a lot. And does yep. all, especially going up to Castle Island, I mean, he probably walks around up there all the time. I oh, lived sure. in Salty yeah. for years, and I didn't know Pat then. I wish I did. <laughs> a lot of people I know are good friends with him because I, I'd go to a show, yep. the one he had in Salty not yep. too long ago, and all these kids came in, and I knew like half of them, and they were oh, yeah. all there strictly for Pat. Yep. So it was pretty cool. Um <clears throat> So the first company you worked for then was UFO. UFO, yeah. And who, what are the other companies you worked for after that? Um, not in chronological order, yep. but uh, Chaotic, XWA, um, the Monster Factory. Yep. That's We're definitely going to talk about that in a little bit. Great. Um, Limitless, I just made my debut at Limitless, right. and that was a big thing I wanted to do um, this year. Yep. 
and to accomplish it this early is really cool. Um, man, who else? NCW. Yep. Um, I got there's so many people that book me. Right. You know, I, I can't think of everyone. That's all right. You, the, you the, wrestlers the, lab, the wrestlers lab in, right. in New York. I mean, there's a lot of places. What I think is cool is the Limitless is really starting to take off. Man, they're, um, they hit their stride and uh, rightfully deserved. I mean, I was looking at their next show. is like stacked with people. Yeah, it, they're, they're bringing people in now. They made, some yeah. no, they're made, they made some noise, and it's always been a great show, but a lot of those regulars that, that would be there and bust their ass for those, for those shows. Right. And then they'd bring in the the names, the, right. the extra talent that weren't always on them, like AR Fox, AR Fox right. and Ace yep. Romero put that that company on their backs. Right. They, they've had some great matches, JT Dunn and uh, Cody Rhodes. Yep. Uh, those matches are what built that company up, nice. and it was such a cool thing to see that from a spectator spot, wanting to get into it. And right. now that I'm finally squeaking my way in. You know, it's, it's, it's awesome. That's cool. You, you, brought, you brought up AR Fox. I got to tell you a little story. Me and my grandson went to uh, Beyond and, and Melrose at the, this, uh, I can't remember the name, the Memorial Hall. Okay. Have you ever wrestled there? MWF used to run there. Well, we, were in the, we just got out of the car, and all of a sudden I see AR Fox. So I'm yeah. like, John, you want any pitch take with him? He's like, who is it? I said, it's AR Fox. He's like, yeah, yeah. So we get a quick picture with him. He's like, I got to get inside. I said, he said, make it quick. So we did bang, bang. He, started, he walks away. I'm showing my grants in the picture. He goes, Poppy, what would you say his name was? I said, hey, uh, Fox. He said, they should change his name. I'm looking at him like, what are you doing? They should call him Weed Man. Uh. <laughs> but uh, it was just kind of funny. Yeah. You know, I, and I asked him, how did you know what that smelled like? Yeah. And he's like, oh, my uncle. I said, all right. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, it wasn't yeah, me. Yeah. That's all. <laughs> um, so, uh, okay, let's see. What companies would you like to work for um, in the future? Every company. Right. Okay, that's a good um, answer. Yeah, I'm not opposed to anywhere. Um, I love to work. But my number one company to get into in the very near future is Beyond. Yes. Beyond Wrestling. That I think I'd fit perfectly you there. Would. Um, would. Me doing my Bruiser Brody character or just me being plain Josh Briggs. Right. Um, they both bring a little something different to the table. Yep. But um, I think that's the next step in Josh Briggs' career is to get to Beyond. They put on great shows. You know, it's hard to go to, like, every show you want to go to. Yeah. You know what I mean? But then when they usually run Sunday afternoons yep. in Mass. So those, that's, like, the perfect time for me to go to a show. Oh, perfect, yeah. You know what I mean? I have a hard time going on Friday nights. and But now, um, this Wednesday, Chaotix yep. in Nashville, right Nashua. here in Nashville. Are you, yeah. are you working the show? Yes, I am. I, and now you are affiliated with Killanova? Killanova Inc. Killanova yep. Inc. Okay. I'm, I'm the, hired, uh, the hired muscle. If anyone nice. wants to mess with Christian Casanova, you have to go through me. Right. Now, what's Mistress Belmont's role? What? Uh, Mistress Belmont put everyone together. She, okay. she's, she's the brains behind the operation. Right. So, um, she, she is what made Killanova happen. She gets a good. You guys got a good thing going on. Yes, we do. No doubt about. Christian's got a lot of talent, man. So much. So no much. Now, it's, now, is there somebody else in the group, too? I thought I saw there's yes, another guy. Yes, Triple Tripalicious, that's who it is. Tripalicious. Yeah. I didn't, you know, and I seen him all dressed up in a suit. That's why I didn't recognize him. Yep. I love him. One of my, one of my favorite people to be nice, around. Nice, nice. Um, let's see. Uh, who have been some of your favorite opponents? Obviously, we know Benny Jux. Jukes, Benny, you Benny know. Jux. Um, um, Warbeard Hansen. Yep. That's, that's up there with... One of those matches that I shouldn't have had, that chaotic, put me in, and I right. unrightfully deserved to to be in the ring with Todd. Um, He's awesome. To be in there with Warbeard, and man, he uh, it was a, it was a great match. Yeah. You know, um, me and Ace Romero, um, every time we're in there, we just beat the hell out of each other, and the crowd loves it. Right. Um, there's another one I just. Um, me and Nick Camarado. I don't know. I don't know if um, his name's made it out here towards the New England, but he's a Monster Factory guy. Okay. Really big guy. Strong. I will say this, and I'd like anyone to challenge it. Nick Camarado is the strongest man in professional wrestling. Is that how you wrestled on that clip I might have seen? Yes. Okay. Yep. From the Monster Factory. Right. He's um, he's their beast. Right. He's a monster, and. Uh, 
our match we just had this past weekend. We just beat the life out of each other, and that's that's the most fun you can have in wrestling is when you and a buddy just get right. in there, make the crowd love it, but yep. you beat the life out of each other. Nice. Now you brought up Todd. It's amazing how far he's come. You know, I, and I've said it many times right here even, you know, like all the injuries he had. Yeah. And he still just battled through it. And, and I couldn't be more happy to see all the success he's getting. You yep. know what I mean? Japan, overseas, it's just, it's yep. awesome. It yep. really is. Um, who are some of your uh, guys you'd like to wrestle down the line? Oh, um, man. Donovan Dijak. I mean, we've wrestled in class a bunch. Right. But I think there's something that, if you put us in a ring, yep. no one on the planet would want to miss that match. Right. Um, I think we're just, the chemistry we have, the relationship we have, what we both bring to the table is something that you won't be able to recreate. Right. Um, so that's number one. I Jack is number one. Um, JT Dunn yep. is a very close number two. J JT Dunn yes. has recently became one of my best friends in pro wrestling. Oh, nice. Um, hung out, I hang out with him a lot at XWA, and we just have a great relationship. Right. I think that JT Dunn, along with Die Jack, are two of the best people on the planet that aren't signed. Um, JT Dunn, the way he sells everything, yeah. the way he puts things together, his mind for pro wrestling, just hanging out with him. And if he's on a show that I'm on, <clears throat> excuse me, if he's on a show that I'm on, I can always go to him for advice. Right. I can always ask him, hey, does this make sense? Does this sound good? What should I do in this situation? Right. He'll give it to me, and it'll get the reaction I needed. He's, he's phenomenal. I love his finishing maneuver, too. Death by elbows. A great, can, great move. Can do it on anyone. That's what I mean. Like, for his size. Yeah. He hits at that. He could hit, he hit you with that. You're in big trouble. I am. I no am. doubt. I am. Um, <laughs> Let's see. Any, well, you just said, like, JT gave you some. I was going to ask you if any veterans besides your trainers have given you good advice in locker rooms. Yeah. Um, well, obviously, Danny Cage probably has too, right? Danny, now, um, Danny, Danny Cage of the Monster Factory, the owner of the, the Monster Factory, the world-famous Monster yes. Factory. He, um, he's made me very TV-ready. Um, he's very conscious of hard cam. Yep. Um, when to look at hard cam how to approach hard cam, how to make your entrance proper so that it fits with the audience yep. and hard cam so you can get both products. And that, that's because he's amazing. Yeah. He knows so much. And his product is on the, the Monster Factory Network, the MF yep. Network as well, which is huge. It's taken off, oh, yeah. taken off like a skyrocket. So um, I think that's some of the most valuable um, advice I've gotten. Yep. I mean... When I worked with uh, Warbeard, that I mean, that match alone probably could subsidize three or four months of just shows because of how smart, how much knowledge and experience he's had. So it just much. poured through. Yeah. I, I take notes after every match, um, either on my phone or a notebook I have yep. in my bag, and I just just kept writing right. when me and Todd worked. Just a wealth of knowledge that's unappreciated. That is so awesome. And this tag team right now with War Machine is just an incredible. It's funny how they met, too, how they meet in the, you know how they met, right? No, I don't. They met in the uh, Ring of Honor top prospect tournament. They oh, met wow. in the finals. Wow. And then, obviously, at the end, somebody, I don't know if it was one of them two guys yep. or if it was someone at Ring of Honor that said, you guys should be tag team. Oh, yeah. And look at them. I mean, it's just, a, I couldn't believe it. Like, I shouldn't, I'm sorry, I can't say couldn't believe it. I thought it was fantastic when I seen them oh, going yeah. over to Japan. For sure. You know, and I've met Ray a couple of times. He's a very nice guy. He's a good guy. I've known Todd for, I think the first picture I ever had with Todd was with my uh, my youngest daughter, Sarah, and she's 15 now. Wow. She was probably a year old, so wow. that's how long I've known Todd. Wow. So, and he's a, and uh, my, um, my fiance's cousin used yeah. to be his teacher in the fifth or sixth grade. It might have been seventh grade, whatever, but they did a thing. Well, what do you want to be when you grow up? Yep. He said, pro wrestler. So yep. one day she comes up to me. She says, it tells me you're into pro wrestling. I said, I love it. Did you ever hear about my, I had a student named Todd. I'm like, well, you have a last name, you know? Yep. She's like, Todd Smith. I said, from Lynn? She's like, yeah. I said, oh, no. <laughs> and it was funny because when she asked me, he had just really started getting over everywhere. Yeah. So I was like, God, oh, you're going to be happy to hear this. And she is so ecstatic. I've tried to get her to come to a few shows when she's on. It just hasn't worked out yet. 
she started a um, a home for battered women. Oh wow, good for her. So she's That's very awesome. yeah, she's That's very awesome. busy. She is like fantastic. Barbara Barbara Ann Greer is her name, and I, I next time I'm on the air, I'll definitely uh, give her a plug. Awesome. Just a great thing what she's doing for women that yeah. need to help. You know. Hi Barbara, thank yeah. you for being a great human being. Definitely. Um, so we got through the football and all that. Let's <coughs> see. Uh, and you answered off here. Yeah, I was going to say, what's your shoot job? But you don't have one anymore because yeah. what did you do? What did you do before, though, then? When you did have to work, you know? Um, construction, time yep. to time. Um, I saved up a lot of money from, from football in college. Yep. You get those stipends that yep. they give you. I lived off campus. And um, luckily, I'm very frugal. Yep. So I um, saved a lot of that money. Good. That means we're moving on to the, my favorite part of the show. The name game. All right. Now I'm gonna, I'll, you know, say the first name, but I do want to say, say something about him afterwards. Okay. Right, right away. Perfect. Ace Romero, one of the best big men out there. Yes. His tag team that in beyond with yep. Malonis. Triple XL. Dude, those guys are monsters. Yeah. Who's gonna beat them? Yep. Actually, I think DYFBO just beat them. But oh, did they? Yeah, they did. They beat them, but wow. I think they'll get a rematch. Good. So, uh, what about Ace? Um, I mean, you said a few things earlier, but. I love Ace. Um, I don't think that there's a bad match that me and Ace could have. It's, um, I, I can't tell you how many times we've worked, and um, every one of them, they just get better and better and better. Um, Ace is awesome. There's no, there's no reason why Ace isn't on everyone's show. If you, if you want to have a big man, book Ace Romero. I think he's one of the best in New England. Absolutely. He's quick for his size, too. Seriously, he, he really moves, is. He moves, moves smooth. so well. And he's actually all going all over the place, too. He's been yeah. down in uh, CZW. Yep. Has he been to the Monster Factory yet? Um, no, I don't know if he's been to the Monster Factory. Um, maybe I can get him up there one of these days. Right. There's a lot of good companies in that area to work for. Yeah. How about uh, Brick Mastone, who will be in that chair next week? Hi, Brick. <laughs> Love you, buddy. Um, intense. Um, Underappreciated, one of another one of the best big men. Um, I, another guy that I can't have a bad match with. Um, so creative, so athletic for his size. Uh, a good friend of mine. Nice. Now I heard some people call him Baby Rusev. Baby Rusev, yeah, he does. He, does, he looks a little he does bit look like a little Rusev. Like you know, I just I mean, saw him at uh, Lucky Pro. Did you ever work for Lucky Pro? Yeah, yeah just I, ju I was just, just there, there with, uh, with Doomsday. There. Yeah. Yeah, that was fun. Um, unfortunately, um, Doomsday, you know, we got, we got in trouble. Right. I mean, we, got, we got yelled at for um, beating the life out of those guys. Right. Um, but Doomsday's awesome. Are you I with, love uh, being in Are Doomsday. you affiliated with Brian Cairo? <laughs> I've been trying to get Cairo on the show forever. Brian Kyer is awesome. Yeah, I, I've, known, I've known Brian, seriously, for over 10 years. My, my son's, two, my oldest son, I only have one son, he's 28, and Brian's known him for at least half his life. Yeah? Oh, yeah, Brian's a great guy. Wow. Um, how about uh, Setherin? Setherin, yeah. Hi, Setherin. <laughs> he's at him and, uh, him and Vanity's coming in in a few weeks. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Um, he was one of the trainers up at the Monster Factory. Oh, oh nice. sorry, not the Monster yeah. Factory. What am I talking about? Um, at the NEPWA. Okay. And uh, he he was in the beginners ring, and he's awesome. Um, one of my one of my really good friends. Nice. He's me and him are having um, a no disqualifications match. Yes, at, at Liberty, Liberty States, States. Yeah. coming up. It's, uh, May, two weeks, yeah. May twentieth. May yeah. Yeah, because I got a whole bunch of I like at the May, end. May thirteenth. May thirteenth. Oh, it's May thirteenth. I okay. think so. Yeah. Let's see, I got it. I I wrote down all the shows because I definitely here come on. That's upcoming guests. See, I don't know. Well, we'll look at it after. Yeah. Vanity Vixen. Jen. Awesome. She's Jen's. Jen's great. Um, one of the best female wrestlers in New England. Um, Who didn't start wrestling right away either? No. She was just a valet for yeah, a she, long, I mean, long time. And she's an awesome valet. She's in the right, right. position at the right time. Um, doesn't get in the way of anything, and is always there for the spots that right. she's needed to be. She's she's awesome. That's cool. She, yeah, like I said, she, I've known she's wrestled around here too for Jeff Costa. Ever hear Jeff Costa shows? Yes. The AWA show? A lot of these guys have wrestled on his shows. Yeah. That's where actually I had my picture on Todd with my youngest daughter was at one of Jeff's shows. Mm -hmm. uh, Tyler Nitro. Handsome man. <laughs> yeah. 
So handsome. <laughs> um, awesome. Yeah. Super athletic. Super cool guy. Um, yeah, he he's. I can't say too much about him. He's, that that's negative. He he's great. Um, we had a great match uh, when we worked. Um, worked at Liberty States together, and Lucky Pro. You know, he, nice. He's really fun to work with. Really easy to work with. Nice. How about uh, we're gonna go with the two owners of Chaotic, oh. Jamie J. Mikowski. Jamie. Um, runs a show how it should be ran. Right. Stops um, on time pretty much a minute before even. Yeah. He's um, as professional as they come when it comes to um, promoters. Right. Uh, always there. Never has a problem. Um, if he needs something, he'll ask respectfully. He's one of my favorite people to work for and a really good guy. That's awesome. How about uh, Mark Beaudry, my old friend? Adult. Adult. I adult. Um, <laughs> I love adult. Adult's Me awesome. Um, so easy to get along with. Um, one of the hardest working men in Chaotic. Right. You know, he, um, he, he does is, a lot before you, to get you guys like the show ready. He, he is probably half the reason why the show's put together. Flip told me that last week. He, he, he works so hard. Wow. That's awesome. Mike's always been a hard-working kid, too. Yeah. Always. As long as I've, like I said, we worked the pizza. And it's just a part-time job for both of us, but we worked our butts off. And yeah. Mike's a great guy. Brian Fury. Um, I love him so much. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be anything without him. He, um. He's genuinely one of the best wrestlers I've ever been around. He knows so much, so willing to share everything that he knows. His school is his baby, and the people in his school are his children. Um, if anyone has anything negative to say about Brian, they're lying. Right. Um, I love him. To death. I agree with you on that. I mean, there's nothing bad to say. Brian's always been a stand-up guy to the fans. To, to, to everyone. To everyone. You know? To everyone. He he's just just in a sentence or two, he can change the way I do everything, make me better. I could talk. This could be a whole show just talking about how much I admire Brian Fury and what he's done for pro wrestling, right. what he's done for me, and what he's done for my friends. Nice. I got to ask you before I keep going on this list, Tom. Who Talk to you about doing the gimmick of like the Bruiser Brody type gimmick. Um, Joey Eastman. Nice. Joey was here last week too. And Sydney Bacabella yeah, was. Yeah, absolutely. You're right. And he's banned. He's banned. Now, glad you brought it up because Sydney was thrown out of here what? last week. What did he do? Running his mouth with my producer. And my, my producer, Dick Gagnon, said that Sydney Bacabella is banned from Access Nashua Studios Un forever. Unbelievable. Forever. Unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, Joey, um, <clears throat> Joey's, one of Joey's favorite characters was Bruiser Brody. Yeah, it was. And um, he saw a lot of that in me. And um, that Bruiser Brody character has done a lot for my career right. in a very short period of time. It's gotten a lot of different eyes on me that um, either shouldn't be on me or wouldn't have been on me if I hadn't done it. Right. Um, so I owe a lot of my success going forward. Yep. To Joey, getting me out of um, my comfort zone yep. with being me right. and trying something so different and giving me the confidence to do it. Every time I step, before I step through that curtain, we have a pep talk of what right. I need to be, who I need to be, yep. what I need to do. And I wish that more people had Joey Eastman in their life. Right. Joey's got a great mind for the business. You know, that. it's a perfect time to do a type of gimmick like that because yeah. no one has. No one has you know for I mean? a long no, time. For a very it's, long it's very, time. It's very new. Yeah. Um, what's old is new, and yep. um, it's fun. It's one of my favorite things to do. Um, yeah, it's, it's awesome. Awesome time. Joey Eastman. Love him. Uh, Flip Gordon, who was here last week. <sighs> Freaky athletic. Um, can, if you can think of something to do, able to do it right um He's so athletic that kid yeah un unreal um sky's the limit for him um another guy that i haven't been in the ring with outside of practice right but 
you, you feel that chemistry. Oh yeah. And you guys um, could have a good match. I think so. I think so. Flip's awesome. Flip Flip's got potential to be a household name. Oh, absolutely. That match that he had with Leo Rush. Yeah. Wow, two weeks ago, whatever it was, was unbelievable. Like I said, I shared it with some friends today. Yeah. That's how right. good it was. And some of them aren't even wrestling fans. I said, you have to watch this because this kid's going places. Yeah. Then I told I said, actually, both of them are because Leo Rush is just amazing, too. Um, Christian Casanova. <laughs> I can't. I can't. There's so much I can say about Christian. Um, one of the best, newest guys to wrestling. I think he's um, phenomenal. Yeah. Working with him is so much fun with my Killanova, uh, yep. Killanova Inc. thing that I'm doing down in Chaotic. He's so susceptible. He's so coachable. Right. So athletic. Um, his charisma just kind of oozes yeah. off of yeah. off of the screen. Um, he's awesome. Uh, one of my favorite people in pro wrestling. All right, I'm going to skip over to another page for on this side. Okay. Yeah, because I would like uh, Danny Cage. Danny Cage, um, a genius. Um, the way he runs his school is so admirable. And um, I think if there were more Danny Cages in the world, professional wrestling would be the most talked about sport or entertainment on the planet. He um, he's made me an awesome wrestler. He's believed in me. Um, he's put it has put his neck out on the line for me in times that he had no he had no business right. doing. Um, he's like given you said me he believed in you believed in me. You know, um, he's given me a place to work that's one of the best places to work right. on the independent scene. Um, I love Danny Cage. We have a great relationship. Um, can we cuss? Yeah, go ahead. Well, don't worry. He'll beep it out if he has okay. to. Okay. you, Danny. <laughs> Love you, buddy. How about uh, <clears throat> the voice of New England? Oh. Mr. Rich Palladino. Oh, Rich. Love Rich. Me too. Um, Rich is awesome. We, um, we have a good relationship. Um, he's just so consistently awesome. Yeah. And he puts that feeling that isn't oh, yeah. isn't that we can't put into right. it into it. Without Rich Palladino, the show isn't what it's supposed to be. Yep. I love Rich. Um, if you need a ring announcer, contact Rich Palladino. Oh yeah, color uh, commentator, anything, anything, you can do it all, anything, do it all. Unsigned talent. It's not just wrestlers in New England that ha you know what I mean that deserve to be signed. Right. Rich does too. He's an incredible talent on right. it with that microphone. Um, <laughs> we're going to go uh, back down to the, the Blue Meanie. The Blue Meanie's awesome. Um, I haven't met him too, too many times. Yep. I only met him once. Um, really nice guy. Um, really smart. Um, he works up at the Monster Factory from time to time. And um, it's because of him and Danny Cage and all the other trainers they got up there. Right. Uh, QT Marshall, uh, Luis Martinez, that... They is, are, that, is that the guy that plays Punisher Martinez? That's Punishment Martinez. Punishment, yeah, because he changed. It used to be Punisher, I think. And yeah, he he's, he's awesome. Big dude, too. He's awesome. Um, another guy that I, I wish I could work really soon. Right. Um, we'd have an amazing match. But because of these guys, they're putting out some of the best talent in the country. So, yeah. How about uh, we're going to go with the guy Maxwell Jacob Feinstein. Have you run into him at all? Maxwell Jacob Friedman. No, that's the second time. They he changed a, his he name. He had to huh? change his name. How come? Uh, you'll have to get him on the show and ask yeah, him. Well, yeah, well, you know, I thought his cousin was Rob Feinstein that owns uh, uh, Red Video. I'm not sure. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to yeah. hit him up later Talk on tonight. Talk to him about that. So, but so it's Friedman? Friedman. All right, I got to remember that. But um, MJF is an awesome talent, a good friend of mine. Um. Another guy that's on my quote-unquote list of guys I want to work. Right. Um, he'll be a name. He'll be a name that you won't forget. Oh, I agree. He's got so much talent. Another kid in this area that has a lot of talent, and he's got size. He's not as big as you, but he still has some good size. 
Anthony Green. Anthony Green. <sighs> putting you over as a huge guy, oh, buddy. Good. You're huge. Stop. Um, <laughs> I love – me and Anthony Green are really good friends. Um, I think Anthony Green is phenomenal. I think with putting everything together, I think he's one of the best on the independent scene, whether it's um, the athleticism, the mind, um, the charisma, how to put a match together. I think all of that together, it's, it's far above most people in independent wrestling. Also, one of, one of my great friends and another guy that I really need to work with very soon. Work with him all the time in class, and you can right. feel how easy it is to work with him and how good of a match you can have in front of real people. Now, he's one half of that chaotic tag team champs right yes. now, correct? Yes. Along with his partner, Cam Zagami. Cam. I love Cam to death. We did a Ring of Honor tryout and um, clung to each other like mother and child. Um, I love Cam to death. He's, he's awesome. He, he gets into his head a lot, but he's, um, he's really good. Cam's a good buddy of mine. Poor Cam, though. Did you see the stuff going on, on Facebook with that kid, Jason Carter? I keep trying to tell Jason. It's kind of creepy the way he's, you know? I think Cam should do it. I do, too. I mean, why not, right? I think Cam should do it. You should just be careful. Yeah. Don't let him get behind you, Cam. No, Cam, yeah. Mm. Cam, Cam's smart. Cam's real smart. He knows how to Another good work take though. care of himself. This area yeah. is full of, seriously, so not much. So many. So many. It's, it's awesome. Uh, let's go to the ref. Kevin Quinn, another guy that's been in here. Quinn is legitimately another one of my best friends. Um, the age difference is interesting, but um, I'm giving him a <laughs> hard time. He's almost as old as me. I'm giving him a hard time. I love Quinn. Um, I wish that Quinn could ref every single match I have. I think he's an absolute professional. I think he's the best ref around, nice. bar none. Nice. He's a definitely a great ref. How about um. Ashley Vox. Ashley the Vox. New chaotic Women's Champion. One third of the Sea Stars. Yes. My favorite team in the world. Hi guys. Um, Ashley Vox is awesome. Her whole, her whole, the whole character. Right. The, the whole group's character. Yeah. You know, they got so much energy, so lovable. Um, Jocelyn. Jocelyn. <laughs> Me and Jocelyn were tag team partners and at XWA. Okay. And we had. An amazing match. I think Jocelyn is going to be someone to talk about for the next 10 years. Um, all, of, all of the C stars. I love them all. Yeah, um, they're great. Ashley, um, Aquaman sucks. Oh, you know, you're going to be looking like the guy that's playing Aquaman. I do. When I put my hair down, yeah. I do. I get a lot of comparisons to him. That, uh, he was awesome in Game of Thrones. Yes. You watch that? Love Game of oh, Thrones. Me too. Cal Drago. Love him. Yeah. We already, you know, we already brought up Pat. We yeah. already brought up Bo. You know Jason Rumble? Yeah, I'm, I've met him from time to time. I didn't, I didn't really um, have too much of a relationship with him. Um, I need to get up to Canada and work with him. Yeah. Um, I can't say anything bad about him. He's a cool guy to me. Everyone that I've been in the locker room with likes him. So, Jason Rumble's awesome. Yeah, Jay is awesome. You are the first guest that didn't do a Jason Rumble. Uh, that's the word I'm looking for. Impression? Impression, yeah. I, no, hey, no, kid. No. How's it going, kid? <laughs> Everybody we, else. You got does. a passport. <laughs> get up. Get up to Canada. We'll make some money together. When I seen him at Pat's last show, he was telling me how even as his uh, baby son, even, you know, he already wants to play sports. His daughter's playing basketball against girls like a year older than her and yep. dominate. And I was telling him, it's in the jeans. Because Jay was a great football player. Oh, was he? Pro football player. Wow, good yeah. for him. Jay was really good. Ask, ask, when you see Slick, ask him about the, uh, when, the time that him and uh, Jason were going to get a push. Okay. Jason, uh, Jason went out and played football, came back on crutches, and boom, boom, uh, oh. slick like, dude, we're finally getting a push, and you, you know, you got to go play football. God damn it, Jay. But uh, we already talked about Dijek. Yeah. Off here, me and you talked about this guy, but Mikey Webb. Um, man. Mikey Webb's my travel partner. Um, anywhere long distance that we're on the same show, it's me and Mikey Webb. We've had a million amazing conversations. Genuinely one of the nicest guys on the planet. He's the guy who got me into the Monster Factory. Um, he stuck his neck on the line and thought that I'd be a good fit there. Right. And luckily I was, but Mikey Webb 
I think can do it all and all well. Um, such a such an underrated talent, and uh, he's a he's another guy that'll tell you that he's in, he's not good when he really is. Yeah, he's, he's, he's awesome. We have we've had a bunch of matches, and it's so easy to work with him. He right. he knows how to work with my size. Just an awesome guy. He great, had an awesome great match. friend of mine. He had an awesome match at the end of uh, Beyond's first time they were in Worcester. Mm -hmm. JT Dunn came out looking for Dijak. Dijak wasn't there running his mouth. Mikey came out and they had an impromptu match awesome. refereed by Dave Cole. And it was That's awesome. It was unreal, man. Great. Rich went live on on, on Facebook with oh, his wow. phone. Oh yeah, it was great. How about uh Davian? Davian. Davian, there you go. Um the best woman's wrestler in New England. No one can shine a light to her. Um she is such a passionate person about pro wrestling, such a dedicated person. And um, she's got that unique look, yep. that unique style of wrestling, that unique charisma. She, everything about her is unique. And in professional wrestling, being unique is, you know. Yeah, very important. So that, that's one of the biggest things. Yeah. And um, I think Davian's awesome. How about now? We're gonna go with the, the, a group, the Mill City Hooligans. You know, one of them's not from Lowell, right? He's lying. Liar. <laughs> you liar. Just kidding. I love Chase Del Monte. I love I love all of them. Yep. Um. But especially Chase. Chase has done a lot for me oh, for nice. my career. Um. He's such a giving person with knowledge. Right. You know, he's he's so smart. Um. Dedicated to chaotic wrestling. He um he comes to class a lot and helps a lot of us out. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, he's he's awesome. Um he is the most charismatic guy on the chaotic roster. He's one of the most charismatic guys in independent wrestling. Um so fun to watch. I remember the first time I watched him, I was just I was used to the to indie wrestling. Yep. And then it was the first time but I'd seen someone WWE production style ready. Right. You know, he right. was he was at a different level yep. than most other people. Um, so Chase, yeah, Chase has helped me out so much. Chase has given me so many good ideas, uh, so much confidence in myself. I love Chase. The Logan brothers are awesome tag team. I think they're the best tag team um, around New England right now. Yeah, they're fantastic. They're, they've been working together forever. Um, they're, they're they're amazing. They came to class a bunch of times too, and help me out with tag teams because I'm I'm tag team I'm a, I'm a tag team with Bo yep. and um, I'm a tag team at the Monster Factory and everywhere else with uh, Wild Man Congo right. with the Beast Cartel and our manager is Rico De La Vega and um, they gave me so many ideas and so how to work on so much psychology with um, with tag teams they're awesome um, and the only reason why I gave Chase a hot time that is I grew up, I was born and raised in the law. Yeah. So that's why I oh, say yeah. that all the time. No, he's a liar. How about uh, Jose Perez? Jose Perez. Love Jose. He, um, he's another guy that gives me so many good ideas. Um, I work with him every week at XWA. Yep. And um, such, an, such a giving, honest person. And that's, that's a very underrated thing in pro wrestling is honesty. <laughs> oh, yeah. Not a lot of people do it. Right. Um, he's not afraid to tell me what sucked, and tell me how to make it better, and he legitimately can't ask for anything else. Right. He's a great guy, actually. I went to him for some advice not too long ago. And yeah. He just gave me great advice. You know Dave Padula? I don't know Dave Padula. No, no, Dave was on. He was actually the kid that was with Flip the other day. Okay. Nice guy. He's from that area. Sure. He used to wrestle all the time. Now, I don't know how to pronounce this guy's name com completely. Mike Antonucci? Is that Mike Antonucci, said? yeah. All right. Nailed what it. What about Mike? Um, Mike is another, he, he's with XWA. He's the owner of XWA yeah. and um, believed in me, gave me a chance. He was the first guy to give me a live promo, tell me to go out and do it. Oh, wow. Um, and that, that was something that stuck with me, that he trusted me enough to talk in front of people because you, you look at me and you might not think that I could talk. Um, Mike believed in me. Mike still believes in me. 
Mike has given me a consistent place to work, and I love Mike to death. So you go down there every Thursday? Every Thursday, nice. and every time they run a show. They got a good a thing one. going down there. $5 seats, man. $5. You guys... if, you're in, if you're anywhere near West Warwick, Rhode Island, yeah. and you're not going to these shows and yeah. you like pro wrestling, something is wrong with you. Absolutely. Like you said, five, like five bucks. You can't beat that. Some of the, the best. Talents. Some of the best wrestlers... In the area yeah. are on those shows every Thursday. And outside the area, guys from New York yes. are coming New York in and guys, stuff like yeah. that. If Matter of fact, that EC Negro is going to be going yep. in this. So. EC Negro is awesome. Yeah, good guy. Um, let's see. Adam Booker. Adam Booker's awesome. Genuinely a, such a nice guy. Such a nice guy. His character is completely opposite. Right, right. Which says so much about him. You know? Yeah. Um, him being such a professional to keep that character Alive and, right. and mean, yep. but second he's behind the curtain. He's such a great guy, uh, such a great wrestler, someone that I'd love to wrestle sometime soon. Nice. We got about a minute and a half here. I want okay. to uh, just promote the show that you're going to be on this Wednesday yep. night at Chunky's. Um, bell time is at seven o'clock. Um, it's chaotic red carpet chaos. Uh, scheduled to appear, Josh Briggs with this Killer Nova Inc. <laughs> heavyweight champ Eli Markopoulos, New England champ Christian Casanova, the tag team champs Anthony Green, Cam Zagani, and Brian Malonis. Yep. Uh, then Chaotic's got another show coming up, and that's the 20th. Um, no, wait a minute. The, the 19th. 19th. The 19th, and that's in Woburn at uh, 295 Washington Street, the Elks, correct? Yes. The Lodge of um, Elks. The Chaotic Eight. Countdown. Yes. Yep. 8 o'clock. Doors open at 7.15. And from what I hear, there'll be a lot of new faces coming in. A lot of faces. Yeah. Don't miss it. And I'll tell you, I heard someone might even be there tomorrow. Fala Ba. Do you ever hear of him? He's from oh. WrestlePro. I love Fala. Yeah. Fala's one of my favorite people. He's from, he, me, I met him at the Monster Factory. Oh, did you? And we have a great relationship. Kids I love Fala to death. A little bit smaller than Yoko. Yeah. But that's what he reminds me of. I love Fala. You know? I got a great story about Fala. We don't have enough time. Oh, you got that. We'll go over. Can you do it in two minutes? Uh, yeah, sure. All right. We um we went into uh, Wawa, which is yep. one of the I know the Wawa. Yeah. Yep. So um we're eating, uh, we're ordering our thing on the screen and everything. He he comes up next to me, oh. like what's up, buddy? We're talking. Some some random guy comes in between us and he goes to hit the guy in the head because he thought it was Mikey Webb. Right. But it was a random guy and he gives him a shot and it was the best oh. thing I'd ever seen in my entire life. Wow. Follow bar. Love follow. All right, Josh, listen, thanks, man. I really appreciate you coming on. I really show. appreciate you having me. Ah. There's no reason for you to have me, and you had me, so it's awesome. I appreciate it. Thank you. Guys, we're out. Peace. Bye. The preceding program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters.